You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. The meaning of the gospel. I thought I'd start with a dictionary definition. A number of different ideas. First couple linked together, linking the idea of the gospel with teaching of the Lord Jesus in the Bible. It can also be used to describe a set of ideas that somebody believes in and tries to persuade others to accept. It can be used to describe the complete truth, the gospel, or linked to music as well. We're going to focus in on the first two of those definitions. And we're thinking of it in the the sort of sense of the first four books of the New Testament, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the gospel record as it's known, and focusing in on the teaching of the Lord Jesus. Well, that's where we might start. But actually, as we start to read our Bible, we, we see that actually the gospel message isn't just restricted to the New Testament. Uh, Paul, when he was writing to churches in Turkey, in Galatia, wrote in the third chapter there, the, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel in advance to Abraham, saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. Okay, this is interesting, isn't it? So the, the gospel isn't just a, a New Testament thing. It's actually something that goes back to the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, and God's plan and purpose with the earth as it's revealed to us. And we go back to Genesis and we find the passage that Paul is actually speaking about. Um, the promises are made by God to Abraham in the book of Genesis on a number of occasions. They start in chapter 12 of Genesis. And there's different occurrences, but through to chapter 22. This is the occasion where God tests Abraham's faith and loyalty and obedience. Abraham shows complete trust in God. And God, after this, speaks to Abraham there in chapter 22 of Genesis. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord. Because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will indeed multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens and as the sand that is on the seashore. Your descendants will possess the gate of their enemies. Through your offspring all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Now now this is really interesting because... It's promises that God made to Abraham, uh, but it, in those promises is contained the gospel message. There's different aspects to the promises that we could explore. The nation and the people that would come from Abraham. But we're going to focus in on this idea of the offspring or the descendant, the seed of Abraham, through whom all nations of the earth will be blessed, the one who's going to possess the gate of his enemy. Well, who's that speaking about? Well, if we go back to that passage we were just looking at in Galatians, we aren't left to to puzzle over this. Paul explains very simply that actually the one through whom all nations of the earth are going to be blessed is the Lord Jesus Christ. What is even more fascinating is that we can see from the New Testament, both from Galatians and and also Romans and Hebrews, uh, that Abraham understood these promises and understood the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and believed in God. So so Paul here comments further in chapter 3 of Galatians, The promises were made to Abraham and his seed. He does not say unto seeds, meaning many, but 
and to your seed, meaning one who is Christ. So the promises, the gospel message, the good news of the gospel message is centered in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was promised to Abraham all those years ago, back in the book of Genesis. It's fascinating, isn't it, to see this and, the, and to understand that Abraham understood the promises and the meaning of the gospel message all those years ago, before ever Jesus existed. And, and we start to see that it's throughout the whole of the scripture that God reveals his plan and reveals the gospel message. And we start to understand and appreciate that the gospel message is talking about the good news of the kingdom of God. So at the current time, boy, could we do with some good news. And it's actually wonderful to start to appreciate the wonder of God's plan and purpose with this earth. To try and make some sense of what is going on. So we, we learn in the prophet Habakkuk in the Old Testament, God's ultimate plan. This is the good news, the kingdom of God, which is going to be established on this earth. And so Habakkuk explains, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So, so the earth's going to be filled with men and women that want to give glory to God. That's God's ultimate plan and purpose for the earth. That's why God created the world in the first place. And we have an opportunity to be part of this. And it's interesting then when we come back to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ to see how he teaches us and his disciples to pray for this. Was at primary school at a time when this prayer was repeated every morning in assembly. We would mutter away, perhaps with little appreciation of the wonderful things that we were repeating. Let's just look at the words of the Lord's Prayer in this context. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Therefore pray in this manner, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, the gospel message, the kingdom of God, Jesus tells us to pray about for it to come. And in his prayer, it's the first thing and the last thing that he, he suggests that we speak to God about. And it's interesting because this fits very well with the further explanation in, in Matthew 6, where, where Jesus explains that this should be absolutely the priority in our lives. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Jesus explains there in verse 33. All these things that we worry about, having food and clothing, somewhere to live, all these things shall be given to you. God will provide what we need. That's wonderful, isn't it? But it's clear teaching about priorities and our discipleship and our life now. If we want to have a part of and if we want to be in the kingdom of God and share in this good news. And it's interesting then to start looking elsewhere in the scriptures to see a description of what this time will be like. And then we start to see the wonder of this good news. So when the kingdom of God is established on the earth, there will be no more disease. And so we read in the prophet Isaiah there in chapter 35, the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame man shall leap as a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. I suppose we had a taste of that when we read the Gospels, when we read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and we start to see some of the 
miracles that Jesus performs with the power of God, we get a glimpse of what it will be like in the kingdom age when again Jesus with God's power reigns in that kingdom. What a wonderful time. What a wonderful prospect. As we think about all the trouble and difficulties with this current pandemic, what a blessing. Wow, the idea of a there being no war. And in the kingdom of God, government will be based on God's word. Put up there a statue. It's one that was created by a Russian artist back in the 1950s, and it was donated by the former USSR to the United Nations. And the quote is from... Well, it's from a couple of places in the Old Testament. We're going to look at one occurrence in Isaiah chapter 2. And it's a time where, where the prophet speaks about the kingdom of God and a time when men will turn their swords into plowshares. So weapons of armaments being used for agricultural purposes. I and sad that we see in U Ukraine today with the Russian attacks and the terrible devastation. Isn't it good news to look for a time when there will be no war? So let's read these words then from the prophet Isaiah. Come up and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion, shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many peoples and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. How is that possible? Well, this is the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, with access to God's almighty power, the power that was used to create the earth in the beginning and has been used to sustain life on this earth. That power being used to administer this government and to ensure that God's word and God's ways are the laws that are established on the earth. How important is this? And we see a society and a world where there is terrible hardship and difficulties in many countries of the world. And yet in others, there is a massive abundance and excess. And yet in this kingdom age, we see the King David speaking about this in Psalm 72. And in this prayer about the kingdom age that was revealed to him, we see him writing, may there be abundance of grain in the earth on the top of the mountains. May its fruit shake like Lebanon. And may those from the city flourish like the grass of the earth. The kingdom age seems to be a time when the earth is restored to its former fruitfulness as it was in the days when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, where God describes that things were very good. The abundance of food and fruit is such that you, know, you could even grow grain on the tops of mountains. You don't grow grain on the tops of mountains, do you? But it just shows the superabundance of the food that is provided. What a wonderful time to look forward to and some of the terrible hardships and difficulties we see portrayed on our screens from around the world will be no longer the case. And it will be a time when there will be true justice. Not just the case of the wealthy with the best legal representation getting off uh, a a case perhaps where, where an injustice is done, 
a loophole is found in the law. This is God's justice, and it is for all. And it will be administered by the Lord Jesus. And so earlier in the psalm, in Psalm 72, we read David writing, Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May he judge the poor of the people. May he save the children of the needy and crush the oppressor. What a wonderful picture of true justice, not man's justice. And the hard reality that we all face, the certainty we all face, which is the end of our lives. And yet in this kingdom age, ultimately, we come to a point where it describes there will be no more death. We have a, a number of pictures of this, but the one I've highlighted there on the screen is the conclusion of our Bibles in the book of Revelation. It's a book of figure and sign, but it again comes to the climax about the establishment of the kingdom of God on the earth. And the picture, and it truly is a picture of good news, is a picture of great comfort. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither shall there be any more sorrow, nor crying, nor pain that the former things have passed away. What a wonderful time to look forward to. Now, it's interesting then to come back to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels and to start to understand a, a bit more about this. You may say, well, that's fascinating, that picture that you've explained there from the Scriptures. I'd like to go away and look at those passages more and understand the context better and really see if this is the case, that this is what God's plan and purpose for the earth represents. But so what? The next stage is the challenge from Jesus. And this is the challenge of the gospel. Being given a place in the kingdom of God is not automatic. Jesus tells many parables, uh, and these parables help explain the type of lives that the disciple needs to follow if they want to have a part of this kingdom, to be in this kingdom. Surely that is something we would all wish to, to be a part of. Uh, and it includes some fairly simple things, but it is quite demanding. So it starts with reading the Bible daily and putting it into practice and sharing this message with others. There's the challenge also to repent, to change our lives, to change direction and to be baptised and to come and serve God and obey God's commandments. We're challenged to give our lives in service and to fully use our abilities to serve God. This is the idea of our taking up our cross and following in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. And we're to show the same thinking and the same attitudes and behaviours as the Lord Jesus, showing love and compassion to those who we meet, speaking the truth, trusting in God, and, and not our own abilities and our own strength seeking to faithfully serve and wait for Jesus to come back to establish the kingdom of God. That's what is required of us. And again, you can start to read the, the Gospels for yourself to see these challenges from Jesus and to understand it better and to consider the cost for us each individually as we need to make this decision. We can't do it for each other. As, as Paul explains to the Philippians, we have to work out our own salvation with trembling and fear, not with arrogance, but, but it's an individual thing, is this response to the gospel message. 
So then, let's just finish with a section from the Olivet Prophecy. Um, it's a passage that we find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We're going to look at the Luke record in Luke 21. It describes what the days will be like leading up to the establishment of the kingdom. It describes a time of trouble. We read there in verse 25, there will be signs in the sun and moon and the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring, men fainting from fear and expectation for what is coming on the inhabited earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. I suggest to you that some of this description is, is figurative and is describing, can I suggest, political upheaval, trouble. The idea of perplexity is the idea of men and women not having the answers to all the problems that the earth is facing. And we could start with a very long list. Men's hearts fading from fear and expectation of what is coming on the, on the earth. And that's certainly my experience talking to colleagues at work. As we reflect on the challenges over recent years, with it being COVID and then more recently the Ukraine crisis. But there's so many others if you come from other parts of the world. But what does the Lord Jesus then say? These events lead up to something. These events lead up to the establishment of the kingdom of God on the earth. So then Jesus explains, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So this is the Lord Jesus Christ returning from heaven, where he's been sat at the right hand of God, to establish God's kingdom on the earth. So Jesus encourages us, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption is drawing near. So, without the hope of the gospel, without being part of this, without being uh, baptised into the Lord Jesus Christ, if we turn away, then this means nothing to us, and it is of little interest, and events will happen on the earth, and sadly, we won't be part of these things. However, if we do uh, embrace the hope of the gospel and the challenge of the gospel, there is, some, there is a wonderful hope, a wonderful reassurance, some wonderful promises that we can be part of. And it truly is good news. It's the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, who with the power, wisdom, of Almighty God will be able to establish God's kingdom on the earth. And so that Christ will reign across the whole world. God's word will go forth from Jerusalem. There will be no more war. There will be no more disease. There will be plenty of food for all. The government will be the government from Almighty God through the Lord Jesus Christ, and there will be true justice. And ultimately, at the end of this kingdom age, this first thousand years, we'll see a time when there will be no more death. What a wonderful prospect to look forward to. I would encourage you to search further on these matters, to explore them further and to embrace this hope and to be baptised into the saving name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we will be able, with the disciples and the Lord Jesus, to lift up our heads and look for our redemption, by God's grace, is drawing near. Thank you very much.
Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at btf at cdvideo.org. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.